I haven't charged my Phoenix 6X Pro Solar for, let's see, I think I charged this on Friday, and it is now Tuesday in the afternoon, 66%, and I have 10 days left. Yeah, that's pretty cool. This is day 91, and it has worn really well. Not a scratch, although I can't tell if that's a scratch. Maybe I did scratch it. Okay, I have one tiny scuff mark right there. But other than that, the screen looks gorgeous. Let me clean it. There we go. So a tiny, tiny little scratch from when I ran into a door or a wall or something. So I might put a screen protector on here because it does not have the sapphire lens, but it does have the solar charging. I put a little plug to protect the charging mechanism. And yeah, it counts my heart rate. It does swimming, it does cycling, it does walking, tracks your sleep. Here's my sleep from last night, score 71 graph. Don't know why it thinks I went to bed at eight o'clock. Oh, I fell asleep on the couch. That's why. And there's my total duration. So pretty cool. I slept long enough, but the quality was poor. So I may feel less alert today. Well, that's what my buy uh, Andy's coconut lime drink is for. Anyway, uh, yeah, it tracks flights of stairs quite accurately, I must say. I'm almost positive I did nine to 10 flights of stairs. Uh, it does have trouble counting flights of stairs when I'm cycling, whether I wear it on my ankle or my wrist. And I, I know that sounds strange that you would wear a watch other than your wrist, but sometimes I'm already wearing one on my wrist. So I'll put this on my, on my, uh, on my ankle right there when I'm cycling. <clears throat> and it still does a pretty good job, you know, as long as you tighten it. Uh, I came up with this little hack where I use this little chain link and then I'll put it around my ankle and then ta-da! Or I'll show you how it looks like when it's, when it's fastened. So you just pull up the old pant leg. And then I usually put it on the interior so I don't scratch. And then ta-da! It just sits right there on your ankle and then yeah stays on there i've ridden 20 miles and i've never had it fallen off so that's really good news but overall it's been a great watch and you know i forgot my mic there we go that should be better audio now so day 91 with this phoenix watch and no i don't always wear it around my ankle. Normally I do wear it on my left or right wrist. Because of the girth, <laughs> um, I kind of feel as if it's more comfortable to wear it on my left, because originally that's where I always wore my watches. Predominantly I am right-handed, but I've been working on being or becoming ambidextrous, so I wear my watches on both, and then when I'm using my mouse, I'll switch between left and right hand, and it's fun. You should try it. It's good for it's good for your brain. So the Phoenix, it's a great watch. I like it as much as the Garmin Tactics Delta Solar. I like it a lot better than the Garmin Enduro, and I like it better than the Instinct Solar. The, this one I really like, but something about the watch face started to bother me after I, that it's static but a lot of people like it so I won't discount it I kept it for testing purposes and then it's fun to have another watch around I don't have a huge collection of watches I have friends that have well over a hundred I hope to never get to that many well unless companies start sending me watches to review then I guess I could afford to buy more anyway uh, what else to say about the Garmin Tactics Delta? I guess I should take it off my ankle so I can show it to you. What I really like about the watch 
is the durability factor. I haven't had to have a screen protector on it and that's just so awesome. And I really like how crisp the display is to read outside. I'll throw up some B-roll so you can see it while cycling. It works phenomenally for cycling. Uh, again, if you skipped ahead, I, I dislike that it doesn't count my flights of stairs, but yet it does accurately count my altitude, which is wunderbar. And the backlight, really easy to, 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 see, to see, to display. And one thing I like about the screen is you don't have to touch the screen. This does not have a touch screen. So everything is button navigation and it's very responsive. The buttons are easy to press. You kind of break it in to be honest. And there's the back button. So boom, you can quickly get to home. When you're in a workout, you can always get to home. Here's kind of a shortcut. So we'll start a workout. We'll say we're gonna go biking. Now we start it. If you do a long press, well, if you press once, that's gonna do your lap. But if you do a long press on this back lap button, that exits the workout and now you can navigate. So right now you'll notice I'm getting solar activity just a little bit indoors from the window, which is here in my office slash, slash studio and also lamps. So a little bit throughout the day, it trickle charges and yeah, navigation's intuitive, especially if you've had other Garmin watches and let's see battery life. Awesome. So right now it automatically pause and because I'm in bike mode, you can see right there at the top 38 hours left. So the GPS is really good and it even got a signal inside the house. So that's good as well. The other cool thing is the colored maps. So a long press, well, sorry, just press once, get back to here. And then right here, there's elevation, time of day. There's the cool maps. And you can do pan zoom, you can do around me, save location, you can do power modes. You can edit the workout while you're in the workout, which is really nice. And then you can even add screens. You can change, uh, this is one thing that I really like. On the alerts, you can change and routing, auto lap. You can change that to every two miles just whatever you want, uh, what you want it to tell you when you do the lap alert. And if you have your phone nearby, it will talk to you while you're working out and you don't have to look down at your watch. The other cool thing about this watch and not, not just the uh, Phoenix line, but also this one is it connects to peripherals. For example, it will connect to a polar chest strap and then you can wear this around your chest and you can monitor your heart rate in real time. The heart rate on the sensor is pretty good, but not as good as one of these. So all I have to do is put this on, which I'll do. So what I always do, well, I rinse these off, but you want to lick the sensor. <laughs> I know that sounds gross, but if it's moist, you're going to get a better data, data feed. And then you just put it around your chest like so. I usually slide it, clip it in. There we go. Let's take a look at the heart rate. So now without doing anything, you can see my live heart rate. It was right there. There we go. Checking to make sure it's pressed on. That should come back in just a minute. And I can do a long press, go under settings, current activity, widgets, control. There we go. Sensors and accessories, pulse oximeter, compass, altimeter, barometer, club sensors. There we go. HR98. Oh, I enabled airplane mode by mistake. There we go. And then so I don't get any notifications while I'm filming. Swipe down and put my phone in airplane mode. There we go. So now it connected to the HR strap. And then in just a second, you'll see my live heart rate. There we go, 68. So we'll see how that measures up with Apple. 
it was saying 70. No, what's my heart rate right now? Please stand by. 74, 68. Interesting. I trust the polar one, to be honest. Samsung, what are you saying my heart rate is today? Sixty-seven, seventy, cool. So now we can just see my heart rate. And then one thing that I like to do is kind of focus on heart rate. So I made this custom screen with my heart rate, elevation, respiration, respiration, respiration rate, which is awesome. And somehow it's getting that with from my polar. So that's good. Cool. So you do a long press, and then you want to go down to current activity, data screens, whoop, let's go up, and then you just keep scrolling, whoop, add new, custom data, HR, gauge, power, virtual partner, compass, elevation, music controls, clock, whatever you want to do. So we could say clock, press up or down, and then I can say where I want it. There we go. And then click back. Oh, I clicked back one too many times. It did a lap, but that's okay. And we'll wait for that to time out. So there's my clock. That's what the clock looks like. And then with a heart rate monitor, you can just mount this right on your handlebars. And then you can just use this as a cyclometer. And then outdoors, it looks really great. I'll show you that. So even outdoors, the visibility is awesome, even direct sunlight. And then if by chance you're riding at night, you can tell the backlight to stay on during activities and you can tell it to stay on longer. And yeah, that is gonna reduce your battery life. So right there, that little phone disconnect, that's indicative of it not connecting to my phone. And that's because I put it into airplane mode while filming. So now if I do a long press, again, you just long press that and it exits out. And then right here, this is the control. Love this, you can customize it. You just do a long press, add controls, reorder controls, remove controls. So I can choose to remove airplane mode, remove lock keys, remove phone, remove power off. Nice feature by the way, that you can power it off. And one of my favorite features that I learned first on this Garmin Instinct Solar is this one right here. When you're in activity and you stop it, so that stopped the activity. Well, let's say you wanna take a lunch break and you don't want that going in your cyclometer or you're cycling or you're running or you're swimming or whatever workout event, resume later. That's gonna stop GPS and save your battery life. Awesome. Samsung does not have that. Fitbit. Fitbit Charge 5, no. Apple Watch 6, no. It does have a pause, but from my testing, it still affects battery life a little bit when you just pause the workout. This one actually will stop the workout and hours later or days later, you can click start and resume to that. Now, FYI. Now a little bit of a warning, uh, when you do pause that workout, that will n interrupt your sleep tracking. So if you have a paused workout in resume later, it won't track your sleep. So be careful about that. And I have a video about that. I'll throw up the link for you. So now I can choose resume, save, again, resume later again, and it just goes off. The other cool thing I like about this is the notifications, how you can reply to text messages. So let me show you that. So do that, we'll enable it. And then I'll send this phone a text message. Now you, when you call someone, this, these are the options you get. So I can answer the call, decline the call, or click the button right there. Sorry, can't talk right now. And then it sends a reply. And this is what it looks like. Sorry, can't talk right now. And then it sends the caller to voicemail. 
There we go. Call denied. Okay, so text messaging. Let's try that. So there's the text message. Let's go running. And I can click right here, dismiss, block app, reply. Yes, okay, out running, <laughs> out writing, no thanks, love you. We're gonna say yes, and then it quickly sends a reply. So while you're working out, you still get your text messages, you still get your calendar notifications. Uh, I'll show you a calendar notification in just a minute. I program one to go off, and yeah. And the battery life, it's fabulous. Uh, like I start out the video, I charge this fully on Friday night. So let's see, that's Friday. So all day Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. So four days later with a lot of GPS and I still have 10 days left. And I'll show you my parlor trick. Right from the main screen, you do a long press and you wanna go down to, keep scrolling activity tracking I turn off the move alerts go yeah I turn off move IQ pulse OX if you turn that off watch what happens to the battery life whoa 13 days so it increases the battery life by another three days on half so if this is full so basically you lose about five days of battery life so give or take, you lose about five days of battery life, almost up to seven days by doing SpO2, but I think that's a really good indicator or health metric to track. So that's up to you if whether or not you want, whether or not you want to keep that. So here's a calendar appointment. Go outside and run with the emoticons. Pretty cool. And then I can dismiss that. And then as far as buzzing, well, let me take this off. Do not disturb. We'll put it on the wood desk so you can hear the vibration. And I'll send a bunch of random text. We'll try some more emoticons. And now we can have my other test phone reply. So hopefully you heard that. And yes, the emoticons do show up, which I think is pretty cool. I like emoticons. And then of course you can reply back. Sorry, can't talk right now. And then that gets sent to your friend. Pretty cool, right? Pretty cool. I think that's really cool. And Slack notifications come through as well. I can't show those, but you can just program those. Let me show you the app. The Garmin app is great. It just quickly synchronizes and you're quickly notified. The Garmin app is great. It quickly synchronizes with your device and it just shows everything. They barely added, well, about a month ago, the uh, detailed sleep, which I really, really like. And yeah, the sleep tracking, the advanced sleep, REM, everything, it's, it's wonderful. I have some sleep videos on that in detail if you'd like to watch those. As far as tracking steps, I feel it does a great job. It has the seven day average, four week, one year glance right on there. So this year I've taken 3,162,000 and change steps, 1,700 miles, daily almost 10,000, weekly almost 63. And then I can click personal records and it has most steps in a day, most steps in a week, in a month, and my longest goal streak. And then it also has running stats cycling stats, swimming stats, and strength stats. I guess I need to do some more 
barbell squats. And then you have your challenges where you can challenge your friends, you can see all your friends, and but not just on steps, you can also challenge them on running, on cycling, and on swimming. So no one swam this week, including myself. And then you can go to your calendar and you can browse back to July when life was awesome in the summer and see all the colors, you'll get to learn those. So there's a Washington, Washington, Washington County hiking, more hiking, St. George, open water swimming. That was, this was a good day. And then boom, it shows me exactly where I was in St. George and where I swam. Pretty cool. And of course, laps. I mean, so much data, so much data. And you can heart that. You can share it with a friend through web link or photo stats. It's just great. They have the body battery, which I'm not necessarily a huge fan, but it is nice. Some people like watching that. Maybe as I get older, I'll be more concerned. And my favorite thing as of late is VO2 Max, which you can actually check right on the watch. So I added a widget for performance. So I added a widget for which you can check right in the watch. Which you can check right on the watch. You just scroll down. I had the widget called performance. So here's my training status and there's my VO2 max. I was around 40, 41 and I'm getting up there. I'd like to get up to 50. That would be good. Maybe in the blue. And then I can scroll down, it shows my race predictor. That's always fun. And that's about it for there. And then if I scroll down under training recovery, it shows me my fitness load. Again, my VO2 max score, seven day load. So I need to work out. Anaerobic versus aerobic. And my recovery, which I really like. I find it to be quite accurate. Then of course, last sport as well. And you can add tons of other widgets. In a way, you can think of these widgets as little tiny apps. And my altitude here at the house. Ooh, almost 5,000. Ooh, barometric pressure. Yep, it's gonna rain. Compass, quite nice. Let's check how my heart rate's doing. Oh, you know what? It's not going to do that unless I'm working out. So I have to resume my heart rate. There we go. Connected. Then I'll go to the, my custom widget. Heart rate 70. Awesome. And elevation. And there you go. That's my 91 day later review. I'm going to I'm going to resume that later. Maybe the rain will stop and I'll be able to go cycling. Thank you so much for watching and yeah, I appreciate pithy comments and ask me any questions, anything you'd like to know about this. Probably one of the main things I don't like about this and it yeah, the, the solar charging. I've done multiple tests, and yes, it, it does help that it has the power glass on top and that small little solar ring right there. But at the same time, I left this out in the sun on my railing. I did tests during J July and August and September. I'll continue to do more during the winter. Curious to know how this charges while skiing, so that'll be fun to test. But I can't get it to charge more than one percent every two hours maybe one and a half percent at most during an hour and I'm at almost 5,000 vertical feet I don't understand why it doesn't charge faster this one will charge about two percent 
to almost 3% per hour, but you can see the size of the solar panel and then I'm on positive that the Phoenix 6X has a bigger battery. They do have other watches that are solar. Perhaps they've changed that metric. So it looks like I'll need to buy some more watches. Maybe I'll get lucky and Garmin will send me one. Thank you so much for watching. I know there's a lot of tech reviewers out there and I appreciate your time. For those of you who subscribed, thumbs up. And yeah, share this with your friends. Let me know which Garmin you have and if you have a favorite. The Instinct one, it's close. I, I do like them both, but this one is great. I Also, one last con, I wish the goal animations were a little better. They could be a little more fun, like the Garmin Vivo Active series. Anyway, pithy comments, type those down below. Goodbye.